Got a couple of different kinds of beans. Got a Del Monte brand. I'm going to get those in trays. And then I've got another brand. Uh, I've got Libby's brand. <laughs> so we'll get the picture of this. Calories, 20 calories per serving. Serving size, 121 grams. Oh, drained and undrained. Well, these are going to be drained. So it's going to be the 15 calories uh, for the serving. I don't know why you wouldn't drain them. What are you going to do? Chug it? Okay, so that's going in. So I'm going to just use the lid and just drain it. And then get them in some pans. Get a pound into the tray. I have 27 ounces. So I could go with 13 and a half on each. Okay, so 13 and a half ounces each. So that's what I'm going to pre-freeze them as. So this this particular set, we're going to be a little bit short. Okay, 13 and a half ounces. All right, next, we have the Libby's cut green beans. And uh, calories, 15. So calories per serving. Serving size um, is 120 grams. Okay, so we'll get that drained. Okay. So these are the Libby green beans. And we'll get eight ounces on each side. Come on, stay over on your own side. All right, so the can gave, uh, the can had four just barely over four pounds in the Libby's can. Okay, so those are on their way to the freezer for pre-freezing. All right, so the freeze dryers had a chance to defrost after the hamburger, uh, the cooked ground beef. Now we'll get this reset for the next batch. So I'm gonna use my little grabber bit and make sure that the top is uh, cleaned off and dry. Okay, yeah, there's a there was a teeny little drop there, and that's it. I don't see on anything on any of the shelves, but I'm just going along the sides to make sure that I don't pick anything up. Okay, yeah, so there's a little bit of dampness underneath still, but that takes care of that. All right, I'm gonna get the thermometer back underneath and get this pre-cooling. The next batch is vegetables, um, sister's vegetables. She's doing canned green beans, which are pre-frozen now, and chopped onions. Uh, they were fresh onions, chopped them, and then they're frozen. So we'll be loading the trays with those just as soon as this is cooled uh, down to similar to the freezer temperature, which is about five degrees to zero degree range. So check to make sure that has the ring all the way around it, even for pre-freezing. I like to see that ring. Okay, and right along here. Okay. So I'm just using this palette knife and just sticking it between the silicone seal and the machine and just giving it just a little twist like that. And that just pushes it out until we get that ring around there. And when it's up to room temperature, it's soft and pliable. It forms very well along that. Before I forget, here's the water from that hamburger. 
So just about three quarters of a gallon. So six pounds of water, perfect size for a load. So I'm going to get it started with customize and start and continue. So it's only 62 degrees in there now. It should drop quickly and be ready in a short time. Okay, so it's been about 50 minutes since we started the freeze dryer. It's lower than 12 degrees now and dropping quickly. So we'll get over to the other table, get the food on the freeze dryer trays and get it in here real quick before it's even colder. Okay, so we've got the pans. Okay, so these are some of the green beans that are going in and there's some other various things. So we'll get these out and get them on the trays. So we need parchments for the trays. So we'll line this metal ruler up with the little felt pen marks on the tabletop. And that gives perfect sizes for the parchment for the trays. And just and I can use the lines of the uh, tabletop to make sure that it stays square. And just pull it out real quick. This is by far the best method we've come up with for making our parchment pieces. We used scissors, we used paper cutter, and all of those are slow. This is beautiful and even and fast. And it works out to just about 2.2 cents per sheet, maybe less if you get them cheaper. If you get these boxes uh, two for about 10 bucks at Costco, then it works out to about 2.2 cents per sheet and if you get them at a better price then that just lowers the price of them they're wonderful so tray one and this has been sitting in the freezer chilling while the freeze dryer has been cooling these were this was a smaller can which you probably just saw in the video and it was only 27 ounces so we'll be a little bit short. And these are the Libby's ones. And so I'm going to just put an L on here for these two. So we can remember that these were the Libby's brand ones. So we can have a comparison between the Libby's and the Del Monte. And then we're going to just fill up the rest of that with some uh, chopped onion. So I guess We'll put that on there. We don't really have to put, worry about it mixing. But if, you, if it's things that you worry about mixing, we sometimes will put a piece of parchment and just cut a chunk like this and use that as a divider. With these, I'm not going to worry about it. For two reasons. One, it's easy to sort. And two, it's not mine. <laughs> Saw that one coming, huh? <laughs> And so this is going to end up a little bit short, but that's okay. And as always, the table gets cleaned real well between uses so that when um, things get spilled, which they always do, it's still clean and usable. And you could make dishes of food this way by simply mixing your beans and onions right now if you wanted to have that. Oh, that's going to be not too far off. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. And that's 1857, so it's not that far short. So tray one done. And tray two. And these are the Del Monte ones. So I'm going to put a D here to remind us that they're the Del Monte ones. And these pop out of the trays super easily. Okay, so Del Monte, so that was the one that was short. So then we'll add onions. So this is going to be the one that's going to be the shorter one. Okay, just trying to pile them up because they'll shrink down a bit as they, uh, the ice sublimates away. Okay, 
yeah so those are going to be the short ones all right so it'll be weird but i can make it work okay and tray three the other halves of the libby's ones well yeah these come apart real easily okay and then we'll just fill up the rest of the tray with onions People have asked about cross odor or flavor issues when you're putting multiple things on and we haven't experienced that. It might be because we pre-freeze everything. I don't know. But if we assume that when they're frozen they, they will cross transfer, we'd have onions and beans. Not a problem. But again, bottom line is we've never experienced any real negative cross-contamination of flavors or odors or whatever. So I guess it could happen. Um, I wouldn't even be terribly surprised. We've just never experienced it. And it could be that it, because we've never done vanilla ice cream and shrimp in the same batch. And I can't imagine we would. But if they're totally solid and on different trays, I still don't think it's going to be much of an issue. But I could be wrong and I'm not sure I want to test it. Okay, we'll see what we have. We definitely want to add more. I'm going to try to push them down into the corners a little bit. Okay, so I think we're going to we'll see how if we can get that one all the way up to... All right, there. That's two and a half pounds on that tray. So we're a fraction uh, short, maybe 100 grams or so, 150 grams short of 10 pounds. But again, we're at least nine pounds ahead on the whole series. That's not a problem, and that's plenty full. I'm going to just tuck the new thermometers into these things. I'm sh trying to get them about one-third from the tray. If this were the tray, if this is a cross-section, this is the tray, there's the top of the food, I'm trying to get it there, about one-third up from the tray, because it seems to dry from the top down faster than from the bottom up. Uh, every time we found a cold spot or wet spot, it's about one-third from the bottom. Uh, so about one, two-thirds down in the food. And I don't know, yeah, that's going to hit all the way into the beans, but that's okay. So as long as that doesn't hit the door, don't worry about it. We'll get that rolled over and into the freeze dryer. It's been almost an hour and a quarter, and it's uh, negative four now, so it's dropping quickly again, or still. So we'll get everything in there. need to take that out and starting at the top with tray one and work our way down so which thing is going to freeze dry the fastest okay and make sure that that gets a seal ring all the way around and it does so it has a seal all the way around already um, i always try to make sure it has that seal even on the pre-cooling so that you don't end up with ice on that seal because once it starts vacuum it'll still melt that piece of ice and it'll seal but first it has to pull in enough air to melt that film of ice we don't need that air in there uh, it takes time, adds more air, warms it up, everything's bad about it. So I like to make sure I have that ring all the way around before it starts. It'll keep freezing for about four and three quarters hours or until those thermometers say it's low enough and then we'll skip past it. That probably won't happen on this particular batch. There's not that much mass for the onions and beans. It's not like a solid soup. These tend to warm up quicker and so the temperature isn't as low right now. They're only like 20 degrees in there. With some of the solid blocks of food, by the time we get them in there, it's still less than five degrees. 
uh, with these, with the shapes and sizes of the food, it seems to warm them up more than the solid block. So a little less than five hours, it'll start the drying and it'll be done in about two days. If it's done earlier, we'll let you know. So we'll be right back. So the canned green beans and the chopped raw onions are just about done uh, with the final dry. It says uh, 26 minutes, but I'd already added an extra hour to make sure that I'd be here when it finished. So it's actually had 11 and a half hours of final dry time to this point. Uh, so it's time to get them out and check them, put them back in for two more hours to see if they're dry. All the thermometers are between 105 degrees and 130 degrees, depending on which tray. They were all over 40 degrees um, 12 hours ago, 13 hours ago. And it skipped the last four hours of the main dry cycle. So the main dry cycle on this machine is 30 hours. And at about 26 hours, it jumped to the final dry. They can tell because of the amount of time it took so, so far total. So anyway, uh, so it thinks it's dry. We'll check it. Trust, but verify. Okay, so arrow pass the last few minutes of that. Come on. Get the drain valve opened. And the scale turned on. And I am going to rotate the trays top to bottom, though it's the middle two that are the warmest. Uh, this one's 110, this one's 105, this one's about 130, about 125, and this one's about 130. Uh, so maybe I'll put the outside into the inside too this time. Anyway, we'll rotate them in some fashion. So starting at tray one, Okay, 851, and I'm going to put that, yeah, I'm going to rotate the outside to the inside, so I'll take tray 2, 838, and then I'll take tray 2 and put it up at the top, so I'll just have to pay attention when we go to check them that I get the numbers correct and put tray one down here and I'll do the same with three and four and that tray is absolutely scorching so 841 and tray four and that tray is just warm not not very hot at all okay and 870 and it's currently the heaviest tray by a decent amount and it was not the heaviest tray when it started out oh but it is all onions instead of green beans so that's going to make a huge difference on uh, water content so that's probably meaningless that it's heavier i wonder if i should stir these around at all gosh they feel like nothing they're just so dry yeah and they feel nice and warm not feeling anything resembling cool yeah okay so it's probably going to be fine so i'll put this one up one though at this position and tray three can come down to this position so now i have three four one two okay yeah So they're back in there and closed up. We'll get it uh, restarted and give it two hours and 15 minutes so we can have two full hours of dry time and check it. More dry time. Close the drain valve. And as I mentioned some other time, I always thought that that was kind of overkill that they bothered to put that on. Like, how could you forget? Thank goodness that's on there because I would forget half the time. Continue and it's plenty cool. Get it restarted and then I'm going to add another 15 minutes so that I get the full two hours. 
we'll come back in two hours ish and check it to see if it's dry if it's dry then they'll get bagged if it lost more weight then we'll put them in for another two hours they felt really dry and warm if I weren't checking them this way I would have taken them all out and bagged them right now because they feel like they're already done and they could be done because we've given it extra time it's already been 11 and a half hours of final which is a really good amount for vegetable kind of things like this so we'll be right back don't go away we're down to the last 12 minutes of this cycle so it's been going two hours three minutes for the dry check uh, the lowest thermometer is at the bottom tray the the thermometer with the lowest uh, temperature reading is at the bottom it's about 105 degrees and then they range up to about 125 130 degrees so they're all at high temperatures now uh, we'll take them out and check them see if they didn't lose any weight so ideally they didn't lose any weight during that time which means they were dried two hours ago if they lost weight during this two hours we don't know if it's finished losing weight or not we'll put them back in so first we'll get them checked get a down arrow past that last bit come on and then open the drain valve and I gotta remember they're out of order a lot so want to get them in the one through four order got my best chance of not mess missing one so tray one no change or maybe a fraction it's bouncing down okay so tray two 838 okay so no change on that one Tray three and eight forty one, no change. Okay, I'll set this one here for a second. Tray four, eight seventy, no change. So I'm going to stop the machine using no defrost, make it so much quieter. I'm going to unplug the timer for the oil filter. Okay, so none of them had any change, which means they were actually dry at least two hours ago, uh, which is not terribly surprising since they had a long final dry. So we'll use the two hours ago time for the final time, and then we'll get the time and the power usage. We'll get this into place and get it defrosting get the thermometer out from underneath all right so it's showing 4551 so 4550 i'll take two hours off that call it 4350 and we know it was done by that time it could have been done hours and hours before that the power usage for the canned green beans and chopped onions was 30.81 kilowatt hours. I'll reset that and get it ready for the next one. Yeah. All right, so now that's set for the next batch. Got all the um, trays over at the bagging area. We'll get all the thermometers out, get the weights, and find out how they're going to get bagged and do a little taste test on the canned green beans to compare them to the fresh green beans. They don't look as nice as fresh green beans, but fresh green beans that have just been blanched taste disgusting when they're still dry. You might as well go out and eat your lawn, uh, but when they're rehydrated, they're great. So these will be interesting. Okay, so we'll get the weights on all the trays. We'll turn the scale on. Then we'll get the weights without the thermometers. Okay, so tray one, 842. Tray two, 829. Tray three, 
and tray four, 862. And on tray two, I'm gonna bring tray two back in. Tray two, this is the one with the Del Monte brand green beans. And so I have a separate weight for those. They're mixed in there. So need to probably pull the onions off to get the weight of just the Del Monte because those were not one pound increments. The rest of the green beans had one pound in each thing. So each tray had two pounds. This tray only had 27 ounces. I'm gonna sort those out and then we'll get a weight on those green beans before we do anything else with them, like snack them. But at least they're easy to sort. <laughs> The onions were green. Okay. Now I could use the one of the sheets here. Oh sheet. So I'm just going to move onions onto here for now and then I'll get the math done and we'll find out the total weights. Uh, but if we know what they were ahead of time, we can kind of bag them accordingly if we want to. But the onions were just whatever would fit on the pan, really, except the one full pan that had the two and a half pounds. So now that'll give a pretty accurate weight on just the beans. So now it's 807, 82, yep, 60 here, 22 there. So those maths work out, correct? Okay. Now you can do with with them what you will. No, you do not have to. Yeah, we do. I'm going to try one. Yeah. So this is Del Monte brand. Not much, but it tastes like a green bean, and it tastes like it tastes like a junior high cafeteria green bean. It's yeah. been cooked for 14 hours. It's got flavor. And it, it has flavors like, and salty. It doesn't yeah. taste like lawn no, clippings. It actually tastes better than the. Flesh. Oh boy. Okay, whew, it was kind of sweating that. Because <laughs> the fresh ones that are just blanched are horrible. I don't know if I can stress that enough, how bad they were. And maybe if you really cooked them, it would be fine. But if you just blanch them, they're disgusting, in my opinion. And everyone's entitled to my opinion. If you do by volume, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. And those, those will basically soak up what they need. The, the only reason to know weight is if you're going to put them in a soup so that you want to have the correct amount of liquid in it to begin with and not have to adjust it. So I really don't know. It's really not an issue uh, for most of these things. But if you want to know, we have the math. There is not much left on these trays weight wise. So we started with 43.67 for the total weight. It currently weighs 372 grams for a water loss of 3,995 grams. So it really went down in weight. But again, this type of vegetable will pretty much pull in the amount of water it needs. So you don't really need to weigh it if you don't want to. Now, bagging. The onions and green beans ended up being bagged as one cup amounts and one and a half cups amounts. They were bagged into a total of 20 bags, 10 pint bags and 10 quart bags. A 300 cc oxygen absorber was added to each bag and then they were all heat sealed. After all the bags had been sealed, each one of them was weighed and a gross weight was put on the bottom corner of each bag in case they ever fail and start letting water come in. That way they can be weighed to find out if they become heavier and you'll know right away that there's a problem. And then finally the tables wipe down so that everything stays nice and clean. Ah, the canned green beans and the chopped onions are bagged now. We've got 10 bags 
of the canned green beans and 10 bags of the chopped onions. Uh, so we've got quart bags and the pint bags. So people ask, well, why, why don't you use a bigger bag? Uh, sometimes a smaller bag makes more sense depending on how you're going to use them and who's going to use them. If you've got a family of eight and you're going to use two pounds of onions all at once, then it makes sense to bag them as two pounds of onions. Otherwise, it probably makes sense uh, to have a cup of onion. A lot of recipes might call for a cup of onions. So one bag and you've got it. Figure out what you need to bag them in trying to figure out how you might use them later. When we started our freeze drying, we used a lot of gallon bags. It was all about, can we bag the entire freeze dryer load in just four bags? And sometimes we could. But two, three years later, when we go to use them, we find out that we would much rather have had four quart bags or six quart bags because somebody just wants one little bag for lunch. Now we've got this gallon bag to do something with. So as time's gone by, we've, uh, we've downsized our bags a lot. We started with the gallon and two quart. Now we use mostly one quart and even pint with some two quart thrown in and more likely to use a pint. Anyway, we'll get these into the bin and move on to the next thing as soon as it's finished defrosting. Next thing is going to be apples with a bunch of apple pie spice kinds of things sprinkled on it. We'll be back as soon as the freeze dryer is defrosted and we'll get those in. In the meantime, we'll get these in the bin. Okay, got the little ground beef from the first one and with various things. So then I'm going to add the chopped onions first. So the kind of a layer and then the green beans next so that they won't be a hundred percent mixed together. Second category in this one and with the smaller amounts in bags it could be that this bin will be filled before all six things are in here but that's not a problem because then we'd probably have a small amount and use one of the little half size bins to finish it up. Okay that's all for these so next as soon as the freeze dryer is defrosted we'll get that batch going. We have cooked hamburger and raw chopped onions. And it's been going for, oh, yeah, canned green beans. All of the thermometers are at least 110 degrees now, I think. Yes, we have no bananas, but we have canned green beans.